So let's go ahead and take a minute and talk about sampling methods. Now the ultimate goal of a sample is to obtain, obtain a representative Obtain a representative um, sample of population. So the sample needs to well represent the population. Uh, and as we found out when, if from reading some of our books, we talked about the um, oh the fiasco of the sampling that the Literary Digest did in 1936 and how they took a huge sample but because it was not representative of their population the conclusions that they made were erroneous. So the most like common good one that we find is called simple random. Simple random sampling. And simple random sampling is nice and easy. It just means that every, every subject is equally likely to be included in sample. So we can imagine that if we uh, were to take like the population of all students at Casper College and we wanted to take a small sample to figure out um, how many credit hours they were taking. One way that we could do that is write everybody's name on a ping pong ball and put it into a gigantic box or hat and stir it up and randomly select out 40 balls. That would provide us a simple random sample where everyone was equally likely to be included in the sample. Now sometimes this it's not possible to do this so we use some other methods to do this as well. So one way that we could do this is we could do this same idea but with cluster sampling. So cluster sampling, let's say maybe it was hard for us to figure out, you know, who all of the all of the students was. It was hard for us to get that big list, but we did know all of the classes in at Casper College. So what we would do is then instead randomly select 15 classes and then we would we would take from those classes we would sample or not sample but we would gather the data from everybody inside those 10 randomly selected classes. So this would be select select cluster clusters randomly and um, measure slash observe all within. Okay, there's a couple other good ones. Um, the, another one that we could do is we could do stratified. So stratified sampling would be like, we know that at Casper College there are, uh, if we broke down the percentage by men and women, maybe there are 60% women at Casper College, 40% men. And so what we would do is, is we would stratify our sample and make sure that in our random sampling, or as we're doing it, that we'd make sure that we got 60% women and 60% uh, men. So here we would divide divide into groups and get fixed percent. So that would be our stratified sampling. There's one other good um, or at least decent sampling method and this is the systematic. So systematic sampling 
is where we take every um, like uh, it so this is kind of a math term kth uh, individual Uh, let me explain this a little bit. So let's suppose we're still doing this Casper College sample. And what we would do is we would line up everybody at Casper College in a big line. And then I would say that I'm going to take every fourth person. So I'd go one, two, three, four. I need to know, um, I need to know some information about you. And then I'd go one, two, three, four. And I'd say I need to know every, uh, whatever we're measuring about you. And so we would go on down the line. So these can be good ways to get a sample that is representative of your population. Now there is a bad version that we should probably talk about too and it's called convenience. Convenience sampling. And here we just collect data, collect data from wherever, whoops, wherever convenient. Okay, and this is typically a poor way to do sampling because it is very often not representative of our population. So a convenient sampling example could be like, well, let's say we're still dealing with Casper College and I go out and I stand in front of the library and I take the first 10 people to walk into the library in the morning. Uh, so the problem with that is, is well, those people may not be very representative of all of Casper College students. These are students who need to be in the library, maybe they need the resources there, or maybe they're really motivated learners, and maybe that's not super representative of the entire population. So overall, there are many different ways that we can do sampling. Here are some, uh, some examples. These four can be good to help us get a representative sample and convenient sample is a poor way um, to get a representative sample and it was actually convenient sampling that really hampered that um, that literary digest uh, poll and because convenient sampling rarely uh, makes a representative sample of your population.